Hi, this is uh, S.J. Ankauskas. I'm going to be talking to you uh, on Unique Glass Colors Layering Mix. Um, basic information, um, as you can see, it comes in two sizes, an 8-ounce size and a 16-ounce size. Also comes in gallons. Um, and basically just give you some ideas, uh, not really techniques, but the difference between medium uh, and the layering mix. We'll be using uh, Margot's Miracle Brush and Margot's Script 5.0 liner for application of some of the uh, enamels on some of the things. And uh, here we go. So, layering mix was initially uh, developed so that you could do multiple layers of uh, enamel without having to fire in between each time. Uh, and it also keeps the enamels from diffusing uh, into one another. So let me show you a couple things that you can do. Layering mix is mixed just like you would with a medium. Uh, you have to go a little bit easier on stirring them because you'll get bubbles. The bubbles will settle out in a little bit. So one of the thing, techniques you can do, the differences, is when you put when you lay a color down and another color next to it and a third color, you can see how distinct those lines are that they stay separated. And this is with a layering mix and this is just dry and not fired. This is done using medium. So you can see, even though the gross part of it stays, but you can see how you're starting to get diffusion in different areas so you don't get as distinct lines. So that's one of the uh, big things between uh, layering mix and medium. One other technique that um, that can be done is with uh, uh, is faux raking. So what you do is you lay your colors down the way you want and then you take either a comb or something and you rake through. The nice thing about doing this is that of course you won't um, you won't burn your face off because all this is done before you heat the thing. But you can see this is done with medium, with the raking, and this is done with the layering mix. So you can see even though you get nice lines, and which is kind of nice when you're doing certain paintings, but you can see that in certain areas you've got diffusion of the colors as opposed to with the layering mix where everything is nice and uh, distinct without any diffusing. The, as I had mentioned before, the way, what it was developed for was for doing um, shading and multiple layers of enamel before you have to fire. And the other thing that we found out which happens is you can actually wet the uh, layering mix once it's dry and use it almost like watercolor. So this is one that was with layering mix and uh, this has been fired so it's permanent but you can see you have multiple layers of shading with the different colors. This area here when I'll show you how was first wet, so now it's almost acting like watercolor paper, and so you can actually get different techniques. You can't do this with a medium, because I'll show you why, it'll actually lift the enamel on the base off. The, you can put one nice color on, but if you keep working it like you do with the uh, layering mix, you will get, um, you will get lift off. So sorry for my reach, but what we'll do uh, many times when we're doing this is I will take, like say for shading, I'll take a little bit of um, warm brown, put some on a palette, add a little bit of medium to kind of dilute it off a little bit.
because we're going to be trying to do shading with this, so we don't want a very thick uh, color. Okay, so then we're going to kind of just do on the dry, uh, the dry uh, layering mix. We'll then put a layer on, and you can see that goes on pretty nice, and you can sit there and work it, and then you can come back with another layer on top. You can also allow these uh, enamels on top to dry before you can uh, put another layer on. So it just depends on uh, you know, what you're trying to uh, look for. Now if we try doing this on the uh, dry medium, and this is bright white, and you're gonna do one layer like this, Sorry, had the wrong piece. Uh, gonna show you how it really works. So this is the, the uh, medium uh, with a bright white that's dry. And so again, I've done something before, but what you can see is when you do one coat, you have, and you let that soak in. If you're gonna come back to shade, you can see that now what's happening under there, it's lifting up the, um, the bright white. On this, if you're doing multiple areas where you're trying to work it, so you're trying to get a nice shade here and all this, and what happens is you can see you're lifting up the white underneath it, so like this, so it gives you a different color. Now, if you're gonna use like the um, layering mix, as a watercolor, so you're going to take some water, and like watercolor paper, we're going to wet the area. You can see nothing's. You can work this sucker like anything, and then we'll come by, and then try to add the colors that we wish. So now, when it's all wet like this, now you can actually get the effect that you're looking for in like watercolor. And again, this is done in one firing. You can let this dry a little bit more and work on top of it just like you would with uh, regular uh, watercolor paper. And you can see that even though I'm really adding more water to letting all this kind of diffuse and run, it really doesn't lift it up. Now, if I keep doing that, working and working it for like five minutes or so, it will lift up. Or if it gets really wet, um, it'll lift up. But again, on the medium part, you can see how that goes right off the bat. As soon as I try to work this as multiple, you can see it's starting to lift itself up off the bottom. And the more you try mucking around with it, you can see you're getting the bottom layer coming up, which you don't get on this. Even though it's been sitting there for a while, you can see how nicely you can just add more enamel to it and just kind of let it all diffuse. And so you can add like a base color and then you can just start playing with it like watercolor. So that is, this is exactly what the layering mix was made for so that you could work it, do multiple layers without having to fire in between. With the medium, you either get lifting or you have to put one little bit on, let it dry, then put another bit on. But the more times you get it wet, the easier it's going to be to lift off the base color. And with the layering mix, you can still, you can see I can still play with this very nicely. The other nice thing that the layering mix does is it can actually act almost like a glue uh, when you allow it to, uh, to dry. One of the simplest things that we used to do uh, on some of the projects is make cabochons. So what you have, you can see it stands up to falling apart. So this is with um, tempered frit. 
And what I do is I use the layering mix to dip one side and just place them on and let it dry. Now you have a nice big, you know, relatively solid piece that will hold. And then you can now add either um, color on top or you can just fire it like this at any temperature. You fire these uh, pieces to the color of, I mean, to the temperature of the glass that you're using. So if this was um, 96 frit, then you would use the firing for a contour firing for the glass that you're using. So you can see, you can put enamel on top of that, you can put multiple layers of enamel, you can actually use enamel with the uh, layering mix, which then means you could coat more and more, and then you just fire this and you'll get a nice rounded uh, area. Cabochon, sorry. The other thing, uh, we were teaching a class in England, and one of the things that we um, were doing was a contour for like the face. So you draw something like this, you put a piece of glass on top. Now I've traced it already with the, uh, a marker. Markers usually burn off, uh, very nice. And then what you do is to make this a contour, you actually use frit, whatever frit, the same type as your glass. So if you're using float, you gotta use float frit. If you're using 96, you gotta use 96 frit and, and so on. And what you do is you take the frit and we mix it in a little cup. Make a big mess. Add layering mix. Enough to get everything wet after you shake up the layering mix. And you mix it up to coat the frit. And you can see how it's nice and coated. And this will dry quite well. And then you take your little spoon, which is here somewhere, maybe. Well, anyways, if you, you can use, ah, sorry. <laughs> now you take it out and you build up what you want. So let's see, we're doing the brow. So we can build up the brow like this, go down, which the brow then ends up into the nose build that up and so forth you can do the lips now the nice thing is is while it's still moist you can uh, push it around to any way you want and, and also the other thing is is if you're trying to build it up higher but you can't the first time then what you do is you let this dry and then you add more on top of that so here's a piece the same thing same facial piece which has a little bit larger uh, frit put on. Now this is dry. So you can see it's pretty pretty solid, it ain't going anywhere. Now some pieces will you know come off and the more you work with enamels on this the more it will loosen up. But what you can do as I gotta show you is um, you can now put enamels on top of this to gain um, some color and depth. So I always like to, on certain, depending on what kind of effect I'm looking for, is I like to do a base coat first. Almost everyone, this is mint green. Of course, it's unique glass color, mint green. Why would I use anyone else's? And so just kind of give it a nice tinge depending on what you're looking for what what effect you're trying to get and then you can either color directly on top I mean put more layers on top or you can allow this to dry and add more again without having to refire multiple times so then we kind of just kind of give you an idea what can be done. 
and there you go. You can either let this, you know, you let this dry and you can come back if you decided that you needed more yellow or more green or you wanted to blend in some blues or stuff like that. You can do that before your first fire. Then what you do is through the miracle of TV, we are now going to see it fire. Ta-da! So, you can see what happens. It's, a, it's an interesting effect. You still have your contours. You still have your built-up brow. You have your lips. And I also want to show you that you don't necessarily need to use enamels uh, to give it any color. Uh, you could just use, just fuse it clear. It gives it a very interesting look. You can see without any uh, colors, you can actually color your frit before you do it and use that to build up which will give you a little bit of different look. Let that dry with the layering mix and then put you know, color on top of that. And that's what we can use with the um, layering mix also. The last thing that I wanted to show you um, is again, just to reinforce the, um, the diffusion versus the keeping everything separate. So these are two eyes, and I usually don't like to make the whites of the eyes just um, white. It's too stark. So depending on what you're looking for, you know, a bluish hue, uh, a reddish hue, a tomato, whatever. So what you do is you'd place the, and this is with the medium. So you'd place the white on first, and then you take, usually I use a script with what this is baby blue, and just kind of gently mix it in. So you can see how nice and diffused it is. You get to see a little bit of veining type thing, but mostly it's more or less nice and diffused. Same thing with the iris. You've got your dark color here on the outside. Your iris, is, I didn't put any black in there, and you got green and baby blue, and then you just let them slowly diffuse in. You can do a little bit of raking type thing, but you can see how nicely that diffuses all over. This is done with a layering mix. So again, you put the white and you try doing the baby blue and you can see it doesn't matter how much you try to blend it, it doesn't blend like this. You actually uh, get separated color, uh, which is okay if that's the look you're looking for. Same thing with the iris. You've got your darker rim around and your green and your baby blue. And then when you can see how it's being raked in with all this, See how sharp those those lines are? So the colors don't diffuse. And again, it's an okay look depending on what you're looking for, but most of the time people don't have such you know, shapes. And this nice little glob of white was me being careless, so just ignore that. However, if this happened on your piece, uh, you let it dry, and then what I would do is I would then uh, take out the whole iris, and redo the whole thing. Uh, if you try taking this off when it's wet, you're gonna smear everything up and then you'll be cursing. So that's in general uh, the differences between the two. We have uh, layering mix, which is made for uh, keeping colors, uh, enamels uh, separate, uh, harder to diffuse. Also the layering mix can be used to uh, build up with frit uh, sort of like a glue to give nice contours and um, and that's basically it. The rest of it is all up to your imagination. There is no uh, limit however you want to use this. The cool thing you can do, especially if you're into a lot of painting, is to use your base color with the layering mix and then uh, basically use it as a watercolor uh, effect. So thank you for listening. Um, We'll be coming up with more snippets. Uh, the face is something just to kind of intrigue you. Possibly there may be a class coming up with that. Uh, but otherwise, these are our, um, our information. We're Unique Glass Colors. Website, uniqueglasscolors, with an S, dot com. Uh, info is our email if you wish to email us anything. Vimeo.com slash Margot Clark is where we have some of more of the snippets on the uh, basic uh, thing and then our Facebook group join us glass art with UGC and our Facebook page unique glass colors Thank you guys for listening